Somebody told you that the reason you didn't meet your goals was because you didn't have enough discipline and you drank the Kool-Aid. I get it. I've been guilty of it too. And it kept me wondering, how do I become more disciplined? But I realized that when I was motivated, I stayed disciplined. And when I wasn't motivated, well, you hear me. It was never that I had a problem being disciplined. My problem was that I didn't have enough motivation. Thankfully, I have figured out the key to stay motivated so that I can achieve any goal. And today I'm going to share it with you. Welcome back, my friends, or welcome if you're new here. My name is Christy and I make content centered around realizing no matter where we are in life, no matter our age, we are just on time to live the life of our dreams. And we are in week two of our show of summer 60, where we are working to become the best version of ourselves by summer. I've really been thinking about this idea that common thought tells us that the only way to be successful, the only way to be able to reach our goals is to have enough discipline. And to some extent, yes, that is true. But discipline is a choice that happens out of motivation. We are disciplined to do the things that actually motivate us. I would argue that if we are not meeting a particular goal that we absolutely have the ability and tools to be able to do, then it's probably because we are not motivated enough toward that goal. And so to fix it, we have to stay motivated, but how do we do that? First, we're gonna talk about what motivation actually is, why we end up losing motivation, and then what are some ways in order to be able to stay motivated on a continual basis? So what does it mean to be motivated? Here is my little dictionary. Cambridge defines it as the willingness to do something or something that causes such willingness. We often think about motivation as, oh, I'm so excited to do this and discipline as, I really don't wanna do it, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Those extremes really make it difficult for us to keep things in perspective. While there is some excitement and motivation, it's less about having a feeling and more about what is it that is pushing you forward? What is it that is pushing you to keep going? If we don't have strong motivators, motivators being that why and the energy behind that why, we will have no discipline toward that thing. It is absolutely possible to be motivated towards something, to be disciplined toward doing that thing, and not always fully having an excitement about enjoying it. For example, think about going to work. You may not enjoy going to work each day, but you are motivated to get your paycheck. You are motivated to be able to pay your bills, to be able to buy the things that you want and buy the things that you need. And so you discipline yourself to get up each morning and do what you need to do. The magic in motivation is when you also find something that you really enjoy about it that keeps you energized toward it. Why do we lose motivation? There are a few different reasons why we can lose motivation. One can be a past failure where we have tried a thing in the past and we weren't successful toward it. And so in our heads, we feel like we are just going to fail at that thing anyway. So we don't have the motivation to keep doing it. Another thing is it's not really our desire. So often we do things that we think that we should do, but they're not really things that we want to do. They're not things that we have any passion about doing. And so we find that we are just going through the motions of that thing, but because it's not something that is a strong desire of ours, it's not something that we are passionate about, then we lose steam, we lose motivation about it. Another reason that we lose motivation is because we have gotten so in a routine that is just boring to us. There's no spice, there's no excitement about it. It's just boring. We're not always seeing the results that we want to see anymore. And that boredom plus the lack of results just lead us to not be motivated toward that thing anymore. The other one is the fear of the unknown. Similar to having a past failure, there might be something that we want so badly, but we're scared that it's not going to happen. Or there's a fear of success and what that could look like. So we self-sabotage uh, because we don't know exactly how that thing is going to turn out. So what are some things that help us to stay motivated? First, try new things. Like I said, when we get bored with something, it is so easy for us to lose motivation. So to combat that boredom, try something new. As part of my show up summer 60, your girl's trying to get ready for shorts and bikinis and all of that good stuff. And so I'm trying to lose a few pounds and tone up a bit. If I feel like the only way that I can do that is by eating the same meal every day, um, doing the same workout every day, I am going to get so bored. So I'm challenging myself to try new meals and to move my body every day, but that movement doesn't always have to be the exact same thing. Maybe you are working to declutter and asking yourself whether or not it sparks joy or doing the container method no longer is 
propelling you forward, like you're over it. It is okay to try doing it a different way, discover new decluttering and cleaning methods in order to be able to keep your space the way you want it. If you find that you're constantly procrastinating on tasks, try a new productivity strategy that you haven't done before. Because sometimes the things that we want to do takes a long time to be able to accomplish, Trying new things continues to give us some novelty around that. It continues to stay fresh and we stay on this trajectory of moving in the direction that we want to go. The next thing is to fill up your feed with success stories. When I am trying to reach a particular goal, I fill up my mind and my entertainment space with stuff that really encourages me that I can actually be successful with what I'm trying to do. Typically that is through following people on socials or podcasts or reading books or watching TV shows of people who have been successful doing that thing. I like to see people's stories. I like to hear their growth journeys. I like to hear how they've overcome their hurdles because that lets me know that if they could do it, then I can do it too. So often we feel like we're alone in our goals and that they're never gonna happen. And we get discouraged by how long it's taking. But when we see other people overcoming those same challenges and other people being successful in the thing that we want to do, it gives us the motivation to say, all right, I got this. I can keep moving forward. I can do this for another day. If you're working to declutter, watch decluttering videos of people going through their own decluttering journeys. If you're working to lose weight, watch videos about people's success stories of actually losing weight. If you're in school or you're trying to go back to school, follow people who are on that same path. And I'm not just talking about people who are where you want to be. Like that's great too. And that has a place, but you also have to find people that are, that you feel like you can relate to. If I'm trying to lose weight and tone up, I am not going to be super inspired by someone who has always been a lean and toned athlete. I'll go for advice. I will go for admiration about where they are, but their particular journey is likely not going to motivate me. I'm probably not going to be super inspired about YouTube advice from someone who grew their channel overnight and did not have to go through the same learning process that I've had to go through. Next up, find an accountability partner. Studies show that people who have someone to hold them accountable accountable and to regularly check in with them are almost twice as likely to stick with and actually achieve their goals. We naturally don't want to disappoint other people and we find ourselves more willing to think about our actions, how the things that we did will impact those accountability conversations. And so we're just more willing to stay on our grind when we have someone else who is helping to hold us accountable. So find someone who can do that for you. Find someone who can hold you accountable. Unlike with the inspirational success stories, they don't always need to be someone who is going through the exact same journey. They just need to be someone who you trust, someone who you know has your best interest at heart. So it could be a pastor or a counselor or a spouse or a friend or just someone who you trust, someone that you know has your back and who's gonna check in with you on a regular basis. Again, we are often very motivated not to disappoint other people. And it's okay to realize that there are some things that you cannot do on your own. Like we weren't called to live life and do everything by ourselves. So don't put that pressure on yourself. Reflect on how you feel and how far you've come. Many times we lose motivation because we are so in the thick of a thing that we don't see, we don't have correct perspective of how far we've come. All we see is that we're not where we want to be. And so we don't celebrate the successes or the wins that we've had all along. Just focusing on not being where we want to be is a quick way to be able to lose drive, lose steam, lose motivation, lose energy. So do make sure to take time to reflect on where it is that you've been and appreciate all of the effort that it took to get to that point. There have been times when I've gotten super frustrated in my working to lean up phase because I feel like I'm not seeing what it is that I wanna see quickly enough. But when I think about how far I've come, oh, I've added this new habit, I've started drinking more water, I get more sleep, I'm this, I'm that, all of these things, then again, it just really puts things back into perspective and it lets me know, oh, I've actually achieved a lot more than I thought I had. Related to that is to stop focusing solely on results. Results can take a long time. And when that is our main focus, it can become super overwhelming because we can get frustrated and we can get discouraged by not seeing the results that we wanna see. So instead, focus on the habits that you are building to become the person that you're working to become. If you are focused on being the best version of yourself in that particular area, then the growth will naturally happen. When we're just focused on results, a lot of times we do things that are extreme, that are not sustainable, and that really just end up burning us out. For YouTube, there was a time when I was doing like 
two videos a week. Plus I was doing shorts every day, multiple shorts every day. And I was staying up late. I was spending long times scripting my videos, spending a long, long time editing. And while I really loved YouTube, I was also kind of tired of it because it just was taking so much from me. And I wasn't enjoying the process because I was too focused on the results. But once I was able to step back and put things back in their proper place and let it be part of my life, not my whole life, not do it in this extreme way. And when I was focused on who it was that I was trying to be, what I was trying to build on YouTube, I was able to have fun again. And consequently, I started seeing growth. I have been so guilty of trying to move faster so that I can see results faster. And that has just never worked out for me. And I still have to check myself and remind myself that slow and steady wins the race. I know me. I have never been somebody who things just happen fast for. I have always been a late bloomer, but once I get there, I maintain success. So for me personally, if that's just how I am naturally, if that's just how God made me, then instead of fighting against it, I'm gonna have so much more success and less frustration if I embrace how I best function. Keep your why at the center. In order to stay motivated, your why for doing something has to be bigger than your why not. If you know that you need to wake up early in order to be able to work on your dream, if that dream is a big enough why, then you're going to wake up early. You're going to do that even if you don't want to, even if you're tired, even if you're not seeing the results. But if your why is not strong enough because you've lost the motivation to do it or something else is more important than your dream, then it's not going to happen. And so to keep that why at the center, you have to constantly reevaluate it. If you're not feeling any motivation toward your goal anymore, you have to constantly ask yourself, okay, what's going on? What's happening here? Is there something underlying that you need to deal with? And again, maybe it's something that you have tried before and it's something that you want, but you have failed with it. And so instead of watching yourself fail at this thing again, then you would rather slowly give up, again, that piece of self-sabotaging. I also like to think of it sometimes as this fear of wasting time, fear that I'm going to put all of this effort into something and I'm still not going to see the results that I want to see. And so instead of wasting time, then move on to something different. That will mess us up every single time. You have to let that go and realize that if you know you're on the right path, you know you're doing the things that it takes to get there, regardless of what it is that you're saying, you stay on the path. You also have to reevaluate if that thing is what you actually want. I mentioned it earlier, but sometimes we go after things because we think it's what we should want. Maybe society is telling us that's the thing that we should want, but it's not something we actually want. And so doing the things that it takes to do to get there it's not really motivating to us. Your why has to be so deeply connected to you, so deeply connected to something that motivates you because if it isn't, then you're not gonna be motivated and you're not gonna have the discipline to keep doing it. It is possible to maintain motivation. Motivation is good and necessary in helping us to be disciplined toward our goals, but we do have to continually harness the power of motivation in order to see the benefits of it. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the comments, please let me know which of these things that you need to work on in order to keep having motivation. Also, if you're not subscribed, like, what are you doing? I'm gonna need you to jump on that. I love you and I will see you in my next. Let's have a great week too. Bye for now.